Hello everybody, it's David Abel and we're looking at photography again and this is the second session where we are going to consider aperture priority. Now it shouldn't be a long session this but I'm going to go into quite a bit of detail for you. So the first thing is, I just want to look at my photographs here. First thing is I went out into the garden, okay, and I took a uh, I think it's a chrysanthemum, I'm not really well up on this, but this is one of the flowers out of a bouquet that was given to Sally for Mothering Sunday. Now, I just stuck it in the hedgerow, all right? Um, it was at midday, so the sun was virtually overhead. But this photograph is rubbish. There is no way I would ever want anybody normally to see <laughs> that I'd take a photograph like this. But it's purely to illustrate to you that um, we can do something special and wonderful if we want to with the photographs uh, that we take. So let me now just change this slightly. Look at how I've positioned the lens on the camera to the chrysanthemum. Well, or let's call it the flower because I'm not convinced it is a chrysanthemum. But it, I haven't moved the flower at all. What I've done is move the camera so it's closer to the petals. And I haven't attempted to take the entire uh, head of the flower. All I've done is wanting to take a photograph of the centre of the flower with the petals. Now, please notice that all of that photo is in focus. Here you can see it was taken on the 26th of March, midday, and if we come down to the fifth line, fourth line from the bottom, exposure program, you can see it was aperture priority. The exposure time, it was a 400th of a second. There was no flash, so this was naturally lit by the sun overhead. But look at the aperture number, F number 29. That is tiny. That is a tiny, tiny little hole. And because of the, the, the brightness of the sun, exposure was only a 400th of a second at F29. That exposure meant that virtually everything was in focus on the head of the flower. If we just uh, looked back to the background, it's virtually blurred out. Hardly anything there. Okay. So let's now just move on. Here, it's a different photograph. It's not what you saw a moment ago, but everything is in focus, but I've got more of the center of the flower in the picture. Now, if we move on to this one, can you see that again, it's not badly focused actually, the better focus is towards the back of the flower. Where I put my focus point was just above the center of that flower, just above the green. That was my focus point. So if you look down at the middle to the left of the center at the bottom, that is now slightly out of focus. Why? Because I changed the F number, the aperture, to a lower number, F8. <clears throat> and that resulted in not everything being in focus. Now, if I go on to a different one here, can you see how the right-hand side, certainly from middle of the flower to the bottom on the right, is nicely focused, but that on the left is out of focus because I didn't use a high enough aperture. I'm still on f8. Let me just illustrate this once more for you. This really does bring it out better. The right hand side nicely in focus and that's where I pointed the lens to and the left hand side not so sharp. It's out of focus. So this is the difference that is made when we select our aperture, the f number. Now, here you go again, different photograph. The 
top of the photograph slightly to the right nicely focused but look at the left hand side towards the middle dreadfully out of focus because I've slightly dropped the aperture number down to 5.6 now let's go on to a different one so here is a different flower out of the same bouquet or arrangement that was given to Sally you can see the background is in focus the flower is there nice picture of the flower but it's certainly one that I would never put into an exhibition or want to put into a photograph album to me it does nothing it does nothing for me at all it's just showing you that there is a flower there now let's look at the difference if I just select part of the flower and come close you can see that the background is still but well, it's not sufficiently blurred for me it doesn't have sufficient uh, yeah it doesn't have sufficient bokeh there uh, the, the extent of blur but look at the petals now the center of the flower perfect focus if you go at an angle say to 10 o'clock all right so slightly to the left going up on an angle of 45 degrees can you see that tiny tiny insect on the flower <laughs> just makes it you know I, I thought at the time shall I knock that insect off but I think it actually shows that it's a real flower and that the insect is on it you know let's now just move on slightly and here we are I've changed the aperture slightly so you can see the background isn't really being uh, involved too much there's the same little insect but you've got everything here beautifully in focus do you get the idea of what I'm now trying to say so in order to get that higher focus all over the image that I'm wanting I'm choosing a high number so I'm going up above the 22s and if we now go on to the next one here we are so I have focused right on the center of the yellow all right and it's kept a nice focus all the way around in the main so that is a photograph that I am pleased with and if we press on even more let's have a quick look now this is an interesting one I've dropped the focus down to f 2.8 you can see the result for yourself can't you at f 2.8 what I focused on on the center of the flower yep that's in focus and everything else is totally out of focus now when I took this it was to demonstrate what the aperture could do in making into focus out of focus and so on I never realized that I would fall in love with this photograph <laughs> but that is the truth that is the reality I have really really enjoyed looking at this photo um, it's not one that I would ever have designed it's one that uh, came up as an accident almost purely to show you what control of the aperture is about um, so yeah that was the lens wide open f 2.8 and that's the result you get so hope you found that interesting now what I want to add to this because I did say to you it's going to be a very quick session to show just purely aperture next week it's going to be on shutter speed as the priority um, and that's a totally different totally different concept it's just as easy uh, it's just different so what I'd like to really make you think about for a moment is if we come back to the very first photograph that uh, I showed what a difference between that and say this okay one to me is an acceptable photograph and the other is just a picture it's like a snapshot isn't it it's a picture no thought has gone into it and when we think of something carefully such as this that you're looking at now 
this has been planned, albeit very quickly. It's although the sun was out, it's really cold. <coughs> Excuse me, really cold. So um, I didn't hang about too long in the garden taking these photos. It was done very, very quickly indeed. Uh, but I put a bit of thought into it. What did I want to achieve? I wanted something that was showing the flower to be what it is. And that, and if we go on to the pink one, either of these, I think, are lovely photographs. And I'd be, I'd be happy to put that into uh, an exhibition. I'd probably want to retake it and just get rid of that background a bit. But <clears throat> I can, I don't want to say cheat, but I can. If I take this into Photoshop, I could blur out that background in Photoshop. Uh, but don't want to do that. So do you get the idea? Look, oh, consider what it is that you are wanting to achieve. Now, somebody made a comment that they were really disappointed with the camera and what they were doing, that they tried uh, to use the aperture priority and they couldn't blur anything. So the question now is, how far away was the subject from the camera? Now, if you are, let's say you are at the seaside and you've got the ocean there in the background and you've got sand or whatever, and you just take a photograph of that view of the ocean, what would be the point of trying to blur any of that out? You'd have no photograph. But if on the beach or on the sidewalk there was, say, a telephone box, um, an ice cream vendor, anything, and you were standing four or five feet from that subject, you could then choose whether to have the background of the ocean in perfect focus or blurred. And how you determine that is through the aperture. If you go down to f2.8, the background will be blurred. If you go up to 22 and above, depending how far away from the subject you are standing will determine whether it's going to be out of focus okay so <clears throat> that's all there is to it that's all there is to it that is aperture priority uh, any questions put them into the comment please don't email me just put them into the comment let me know whether this was sufficiently uh, answering any thoughts, questions, challenges you had with regard to the aperture priority setting. And if it was okay, we'll move on next Monday into shutter speed priority. And if you like moving things, that is going to be really appealing to you, such as horse racing, motorcycle racing, uh, cars going along, you know, photographing moving objects, Shutter Priority is a great program to use. But for me in nature, I generally use either Aperture or Totally Manual. And we're going to come back to that before we finish the series. Uh, I like to be fully manual in charge of every aspect of the camera. Okay, that's it for now. Bye.